Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up in the programme, we're here in Portugal where the reservoirs are nearly empty and the soil is dry. So how do you live with drought? We have to accept this as a way of being, a way of life and adapt to this reality we are living in as best we can. Right now, the latest data for February from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. And last month, Europe as a whole was 2.4 degrees warmer than the 1991 to 2020 average. And if we have a look at this map of temperature anomalies worldwide, you can see that figure confirmed with Europe and much of Russia shaded in red, indicating warmer than average temperatures. But it was a quite different story from Alaska to Greenland and right down to Texas in the US, where temperatures were in some cases well below the February average. Now, let's take a quick look at what's happening in Antarctica. It's the end of summer there, and the sea ice reached its second lowest monthly average on record. Around the continent, there were 0.9 million square kilometres less sea ice than average this February. And now to our report, looking at the huge challenges of living with drought in Portugal. 95% of the country is now facing a severe or extreme drought. Dry conditions which have hit the entire Iberian Peninsula this winter. Farmers are facing a tough growing season ahead, so how are they adapting? I went to eastern Portugal to find out. This bright green field of barley may look perfectly healthy to the untrained eye, but farmer José Maria Facao can already see that the plants are suffering from the drought. The barley should normally be taller, thicker and have longer roots. Weakened by a lack of rain, it's succumbing to fungal infestation. This is typical of when a plant is weak, when it needs to grow and it's left wanting. Everything bad happens to it, like a person who is sick and malnourished, who gets ill a lot easier. No need to be an experienced farmer to see the problem here. Jose Maria recorded around 10 millimetres of rain in January and February, compared to 200 millimetres in the same period last year. It's the middle of March, and the water level in this reservoir should normally be way above my head. So is this climate change, or is it just natural variability? At the Portuguese Weather Service, climatologist van der Pires says global warming is playing its part. The last two decades have been the driest since records began, droughts are now more frequent and unusually wet years are rarer. What's more, the trend will continue. At the end of this century, projections point to decreases in precipitation across the country. These differences could be precipitation losses of 15 to 20 per cent in the north and 30 to 40 per cent in the southern region, which is quite significant. Back on the farm, José Maria shows us the computer-controlled irrigation system, soil moisture probes and growth sensors he uses to keep these almond trees alive and productive. I can't rely on my eyes. By looking, I don't see anything. I have to look underground to see where the humidity is, and this is how I can manage a crop that needs a lot of water with very little water. That faith in technology and data is echoed by irrigation expert Gonzalo Rodriguez, who says we need to deploy every possible tool to better manage the water that we have. Using soil water monitoring sensors, weather stations, plant sensors, satellite images, drone images, whatever to really understand the behaviour of our crops, we have to learn and make the best use of available technology to be more and more effective and more efficient. Well, that's all we have time for. You can see all the data presented in this programme and read more about climate change on euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.